While local governments keep defying federal law when it comes to the southern border, we're still seeing a massive influx of illegal immigrants just pouring into the country uh, via the southern border. Open gates, open areas that are just unregulated, unpatrolled, because there's so many Border Patrol agents focusing on other things that are pretty much just distracting them straight up from the issue on the border itself. They're having to take care of children and uh, young women and families there that are just plaguing the institutions confining them at the moment. It's pretty sad, honestly. And they keep busing in people with Ebola that are coming from now African countries. We're going to start seeing an influx of those, I'm sure. Um, probably already have been, that really haven't been reported, uh, I would imagine. I mean, it's just like the whole case where there's members of even ISIS trying to infiltrate the southern border because they know how vulnerable it really is at the moment. So they're taking advantage of it. As uh, I mean, it makes sense. That's a perfect entry point. Uh, it's wrong, absolutely. But I can see why they're going to the southern border. It's so obvious, so clear that it's just unregulated. And the UN's really pushing that uh, behind closed doors, no doubt. They are just a straight up open wing of globalization and elitism um, on the world stage to bring in the global government to a oh, giant, massive, just, just super state. And it's really working effectively. Now, the Trump administration has multi at multiple points said that, you know, they're working on the border, they're building border barriers. But it's getting to a point now where even private contractors have to build their own border structure. Um, we're seeing cities overwhelmed with border, um, excuse me, with, with it, massive migrant influxes and illegals coming through, uh, claiming asylum, things like that. But how honest is it really? They're bringing Ebola in. We're going to see a massive Ebola case on the rise here. I can almost guarantee it. And then they're going to start blaming it on um, people not taking vaccines and things like that. And they're going to start pushing vaccines. It's going to get big. I can already see it. I'm predicting it right now uh, that that's going to be the standpoint in the near future here. So why is the border being so overwhelmingly open and uh, the Democrats are pushing it well, really hard. Well, let's go back to the 1990s when even the Democrats like Clinton and other members of Congress were openly saying that they oppose what they're doing now. Well, even what they're doing now, they were saying that the border needs to be closed. It's, it's, it's unprecedented how many people are coming in now. We're really seeing unprecedented levels of people striking the border and crossing the border. And just really making the immigration population, the illegal immigration population in particular, just skyrocket. The, it, we, keep, we keep seeing the number of 11 million people. We've been showing that number for years. It's definitely up in the upper tens, like 20, 30 million people. I mean, I mean, minimum. There's got to be, there's something not being reported. There's got to be way more that are just not being reported on. And... Um, CPB has already had to let go so many people into different cities because they're getting so overwhelmed at their own facilities. I, 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 it just blows my mind how people are still saying that we need to let these people in. The Democrats are just openly calling on uh, the dumbest people to support this. It's crazy. You have to have a stupid low IQ to under, not understand the, the severity of this. It's, it's out of this world. So, honestly, I don't think the administration is being tough enough on it. I know they were going to do the terrorists on Mexico, call that off, has an agreement with Mexico now, uh, with the president there. And let's see how that goes. Let's see if they actually stand by their word, and they're going to enforce more officers to stop this massive influx because if not i think the terrorists should come back if if they don't within a certain time period um uh, at least a, a couple months see how they do and if there's no progress being made we've definitely got to implement tariffs on them because they are screwing us over by design of course that's exactly what the deal is what the agenda is and uh it'll it'll be pushed no matter what they're still going to try and push that because they've got to have america fall 
America, the elitists have to have America fall first because America is the last stronghold resisting the global government influx that needs to be implemented, that they want to be implemented uh, to make their world government a real thing. Now, China's already, uh, you know, the, the, pretty much the precursor, the predecessor, the one that they want to be the model of since America was going to be an Obama. But now since Trump's in, they're like, okay, well, now we've got to lean towards China. China was already going to be a massive wing to it. China was already going to help implement the New World Order. But now China is kind of like the, the, the guiding light, the Luciferian light, bringing in tyranny across the world. And they're doing it with surveillance, with facial recognition, with uh, uh, credit scores on people. Social credit score, should I say, on their own people that Facebook is implementing here, will be implementing here in a hardcore stance, I guarantee it, unless they are really, really regulated, focused on. I mean, there needs to be really big hearings about this, um, not just little pansy stuff asking him pansy questions. There are some senators and congressmen that have been asking the good questions, but eh, we've got to step out of our game on Facebook. They're a private company, but still, it doesn't matter. They are huge. They are dominating the tech sector on the social media market. Facebook is still pretty much the largest one. And they run Instagram and WhatsApp. I mean, it's it's crazy. Even the WhatsApp guys came out and said, this is too much, this is too powerful. Big tech's too big. Um, they're helping communist countries, for God's sakes, uh, bring about such a tyrannical system on their own people. It's terrible. People can't even fly. You can't travel. You can't own property. It's awful in China. China is so screwed. They have vans that go around kidnapping people, taking you if you oppose the government and the Communist Party. It's evil. China is an evil arm and will be and always will be a massive wing along with Russia too. Even though Russia is kind of coming back, they're kind of reviving their own Christianity standpoints. They're kind of, kind of pushing the globalization idea away. However, they're still kind of helping at the same time. It's a weird paradigm of Russia. It's very complex. Very complex indeed. I don't think Putin wants war or anything. I don't, I don't think he wants to assist in this. However, China does. Xi Jinping does. We can focus on China all day about how crazy they are, about how bad they treat their workers, about what they do with their own companies, with private companies there. We've had a lot of companies. We do so much trade with China that they own so much of our debt. And that's not a joke. They own a lot of our debt. Um, and they own a lot of Hollywood here. They're just a massive tentacles. They've got tentacles all over the United States. They've had secret buildings here. They have secret buildings in, 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 in New York City. And all the propaganda they're running in Hollywood. It's out of this world. So pro, all, pro, all pro-Chinese communist ideology in China with the movies. Uh, with, with Chinese people, with the Chinese government winning, with the Chinese, uh, I mean, just, just, just destroying America. It's, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. Oh, it just gives me chills thinking about it because this is so real. And I've had a lot of coffee, so get, get uh, deal with me. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's a totalitarian wing and it is being used. Uh, and America is going to be, is the hardest one to fall, even though they're kind of, we are... I don't care what people say. I don't care. If you're really following this, if you're really understanding how the socialist movement in America is kind of expanding and it's being micro, uh, you know, magnified through the media and things like that, it is a real thing and it's growing. The fact that we have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in Congress is, I mean, just as exhibit A enough. You know, she's a flying, flaming socialist and Bernie Sanders running for president again and all the Democrats are going towards this, excuse me, left wing, huge left wing platform that's far left. Even the centrist Democrats, even Joe Biden's kind of starting to lean to the far left now. When people were really making it a point that he was going to be a hopeful, just centrist kind of Democrat kind of establishment. But here's something also that I want to pronounce upon when it comes to uh, Biden. Just look at Biden. And then look at Hillary Clinton in 2015, 2016 when she was running her campaign. It's identical. And the elitists want to run Hillary. Well, they wanted to run Hillary. Now, since she lost, they're running another Hillary. 
in the form of Joe Biden. They still are just trying to get the pro-establishment movement going. And Joe Biden's old. He's almost 80 years old. He's a couple years from 80 years old. He's, what, 78 years old, something like that? He's old. And he's not... He doesn't have the stamina that Trump has right now at his age. Trump just has great stamina for his age. It's unbelievable, honestly, uh, for someone especially sober like that. But Biden doesn't. He's a corpse like Hillary was in 2016. Do you not see the comparison there? He is a corpse just like Hillary was in 2016. And I really almost feel sorry for the idiots running him because they just don't understand and they're trying to, you know, give give someone that's super established from the scenes middle of the road. Once he gets in office, he's going to push exactly what Obama was doing. He's going to do exactly what Obama was doing. They hate Bernie. And I was talking about this in my last podcast yesterday. They hate Bernie because he is real. Because he does want to... He's got his own ideas and wants to kind of do his own thing. But still bring a socialism, which, okay, it's good. But, like, hey, you know, we kind of... He's not as controllable as Biden. Biden is super controllable. Um, he's super establishment, and he's got a lot of influence behind him. Get the picture? Bernie doesn't as much, necessarily. And uh, Elizabeth Warren's another one, too. But she's not. Re- they know she's not really going to get She's not going to win it. I mean, they already kind of have it set. They want Joe Biden to get it. They want him to beat Trump because they think he's the only one that can. Bernie lost. He was a close one, but Bernie lost. Um, and I think Bernie's going to lose again. I really do think it might come down to Trump and Biden. It really might. When, when, the, when the actual post-RNC, when Trump is in DNC, it's going to be Biden and Trump. I'm just going to call it right here as I see it. That's what I see happening in the near future for next year. And it's going to be an intense debate. But I do think the president's going to get it again. I think Trump's going to win it again. I think he's already got it in the bag. Pretty much. Because... Even if even if he sits there and does nothing, just like people were saying before in 2017, even if Trump sat in the Oval Office and did freaking nothing, it's better than Hillary Clinton doing further damage, expanding Obama's policies, and really bringing in the new world order just like Obama really was trying to. He, she would have been a huge gun grabber. The freedom of speech would have been expedited at an insane rate, way more than it is now. The only reason it's happening now, see, people think like, oh, well, look, this freedom of speech that's happening under Trump, uh, they're trying to get rid of the First Amendment uh, under Trump. He must be because of him. No, it's not. It is, but not in the way you think it is. It's because of him, and it's happening under him because he's in office. If he would have lost, they would have done it way quicker. But now that they've had to kind of slowly implement it, they couldn't get rid of the Second Amendment with the, with the, with the, with the school shootings that were happening. So now they have to go back and all right, how do we how do we really stop it? How do we really how do we start to take freedoms at a realistic level? And you start taking with the First Amendment. You start on social media and big tech, and then they're going to put the argument that they're private companies. Okay, that puts people in a very gray area. But at the same time, it's not really gray area. It's black and white because those platforms pretty much run the internet, and it's just like Matt Drudge says, they really are the ghettos of the internet. It's true. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, 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 um, Snapchat, they're all the ghettos of the internet. I don't even have a Snapchat. Okay, I don't even have, the, really the only one I use is Facebook because of the platform it provides for my page and, and YouTube. YouTube's not really a social media platform though, I don't really count that. It's just a big Google wing that is probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, driver to eliminating free speech online. Because they're going to start demonetizing, well, they already are demonetizing videos of conservative uh, YouTubers and, 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 and vloggers. And it's going to get so much worse. They're unpersoning people. You see what I mean? They're, they're getting rid of people online to maybe, who knows, get rid of them in real life. They got to politically destroy someone. They got to visually destroy someone. They have to financially destroy someone so they can ultimately destroy, if it gets to that point. But they are for sure visually on via the internet and financially trying to destroy people that are conservative libertarian voices so there's no opposition to what they are going to bring in. Do you understand? New World Order is not fully here yet, but it's approaching. It's coming. It'll come. Uh, it's, it's, it's almost inevitable that it's going to come. 
but it's just us having to slowly push back on it. Or if not, if we have the godly will to really stop it. Whatever God wills, okay? It's whatever the Lord wills. But we can do our best as human beings to try and stop this. And for the people that don't know, for future generations, for children coming later, we can be the ones to really stop this and just get the message out. People are like, well, how do you, how do you, oh, there's, there's so much more powerful. They got so much more influence. How do we do this? Well, do what I'm doing. I'm not perfect. I don't know all the super duper de- 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 you know, details and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not in government. I'm not in the CIA. I'm not in anything. I'm just literally sitting here in my, uh, uh, with a radio. I mean, excuse me. With a, well, yeah, shoot. It uh, feels like it. With a microphone and a computer and you just make it happen. And you put it on YouTube and you try and help people out. Try and wake people up. You just get them out of the trance. They're so hypnotized by this bullshit on TV. And the crap they're hearing all on, I mean, on music industry and everything. Everything's so influential. It's everywhere. It's omnidirectional focusing in on you. It's zeroing in on you, the consumer. You're just a consumer, a mindless consumer. And you've got to break that trance that you don't have to stay a mindless consumer forever. You can actually be someone that produces, that leads, instead of just following. Why do you think all the in social medias are just follow, follow, follow this, follow that, follow that? Where's all the lead this, lead that, lead the? It's not there. They're raising a generation of followers from cradle to grave. Used to not be like that. This really started in the 70s, big time. But we can go back further to when they made the League of Nations and stuff like that in the 30s and everything and, you know, Cecil Rhodes roundtables. You can go back that far. But now it's really implemented at a full scale to where people are just totally affected by it. Totally dumbed down. And the education system also is a huge player. Massive player. It's, um, it's, it's undeniable. It's recorded history. It's everywhere. The Rockefellers had a huge influence on it. And that's documented as well. I mean, I mean, he wrote book, he wrote his own memoirs book about how he's proud about bringing in the New World Order. He said he was, he's proud of it. Excuse me. These people don't care. They're very open to it. So big new Brzezinski died mm, two years ago. I remember seeing it on the news. Rockefeller died, I think, two years ago. He was 101 years old. Two or three years ago, my, it slips my mind now what the exact uh, year was it, 2016 or 2017. Nonetheless, the ones who started it are gone, but the, but there's still heirs and there's still other people pushing it, okay? Just because they're dead doesn't mean it's dead altogether. It's still very much alive and needs to be discussed. It needs to be discussed because it's happening. And it's happening now. And it's going to keep happening in the future. It's never going to die unless we really take a stance. The sleeping giant woke up in 2017 on Election Day, November. Okay. The sleeping giant really showed its head, sat on, got up off its ass, stretched a little bit because it's been asleep for a while, but kind of sitting there, you know, in a daze, letting things happen. And then it gets up and just starts knocking shit down, man. It just starts going. So, you know, we did a great job there, but see, sometimes a sleeping giant can go fuck back to fall asleep. Because, okay, we got Trump in office, but okay, we can, we can settle down now because he's there and he's going to take care of everything, right? That's not how you need to think of this. That's not how you need to think of it at all. That's how more things really just, that, that's, that's, how, that's how they get you. That's how they really start squeezing you again. It's like that bow constrictor. You got that bow constrictor loosened up. You got it off a little bit. Then you kind of start paying attention. You started fighting, got it off a little bit. Then you start paying attention because it's loose. And, you know, it looks like it's going to go away, but it's not. It's going to reconstrict slowly back on you. Slowly back on you, like the boiling frog. Okay. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of topics to discuss with it. Uh Personally, in my opinion, I think the biggest endangerment to us right now is artificial intelligence. That's my, that's my, I think the biggest danger to humanity as a whole is artificial intelligence. However, when it comes to the law politically and economically, there's a lot of things that are really endangering to us, especially right here at home in the U.S. There's a lot of things that can happen here that can really take us over. And if we're not careful, we can either have a, we can have another, and not vigilant, we can have another false flag happen like 9-11. Another inside job happened to try and take away our freedoms again. Look what happened under 9-11. 
uh, TSA checkpoints, uh, Department of Homeland Security, the expansion of DHS, the Patriot Act, things like that, that just really took us over and took away our liberties almost virtually overnight, and no one did anything to oppose it. It just happened. They just took our rights. And then people people say, well, yes, the conquer the, the Constitution is pretty much just suspended since the uh, Emergency Powers Act. Okay, yeah, that's that's basically true, but it's still a living, breathing document on some levels. It has to be. We've got to we've got to revive it. There's still a bunch of executive powers and and, and 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 emergencies that have still been implemented to this day. I get that. However, the Constitution still does stand. That is still the supreme law of the land. And if we don't stay vigilant, it's going to really go away. You think it's gone now? Huh, you just wait. Give us, give us, give us eight years, eight more years of a, of a leftist in office, of a communist in office. It's really what it is, is communism in a different form. It's got different masks and different identities. It's communism in a different form. Give us eight years of that. Eight more years of what Obama did. Maybe double that. Not with the rate of time that he's in office, but what he did quantity-wise in office. You'll see something happen here that the founders would roll in their graves three times over. Martin Luther King would roll in his grave three times over than we're seeing now. But see, the scary thing is it's happening all over the world. Europe is having its problems. Europe is the model for here. Okay, Europe, everything that happens in the UK, Germany, France is going to happen here. The massive migrant influx that's happening over there is ridiculous. Italy, they're having boats shipped in from uh, 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 North African countries going to Sicily, Italy, and then they're just mm, boo, 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 making their way through the country, through the EU, the borderless EU, pretty much. The EU is falling apart, though, and they're admitting that. Even George Soros had to write a, uh, an op-ed, pretty much. In a, uh, I forgot what newspaper it was. What, what website it was, but he wrote an op-ed pretty much saying that like, oh my god, if we don't if we don't keep going, if we don't keep pushing this, if we don't keep driving this, it's all going to fall apart. But they all operate in secrecy. That's the name of the game. From the Illuminati back in the seven, back in 1776 to now. Secrecy is the ultimate goal. Council on Foreign Relations, all those front groups, United Nations, uh, 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 Trilateral Commission, all those people and all those organizations, all those mega groups, those elitist groups, have to operate in secrecy. And look, now no one talks about them anymore. It's like they don't even exist, but they very well do. They're in the White House. The CFR is in the White House. They run a lot of things still. They're still members in all organizations. They've got aspects covered from science to government to religion to, to uh, 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 politics in general. To economics. They've got all the fronts covered. Medical, business, medical industry. Everything's covered. They've got their hands, their tentacles wrapped around it all. And they're trying to just take us all over silently. It can't be like, like Hitler did in genocide. It can't be a democide. It's got to be very slow, very scientific, especially scientific. And they've got to wrap their tentacles around it slowly. Then they're slowly constricting you to the point where you don't even feel it. You don't even know it. You just sit there on your ass watching, watching reality TV that's not even real. That's not real life. And do nothing about it and go take your happy pills. That's literally what they're trying to do when it comes to destroying America. That's the best way to do it. You know, there's only three countries, two really, in the world that have commercials with pain killers. It's here in New Zealand. I think Brazil now, but I think maybe they maybe they stopped. But I know for a fact here in New Zealand are the only ones that advertise medicine on tv why do you think that is why do you think they advertise medicine on tv that's literally to get us dumbed down to get us there to get us taking the meds to to get to get you on these happy pills and when you take them you're really not happy it makes you worse it imbalances your brain even worse they take you away from holistic practices real medicines that could actually help you herbal supplements things like that that can actually help you and they just put you on this opioid-based stuff. That's why the Afghan, Afghan fields are being guarded so heavily. Okay, because we're using that to make, you know, our, our prescription pills here. We're going to lose everything we worked our asses for in the last 250 plus years. If we don't stay vigilant, if we don't keep up with what the founders needed us to do, if we, if we sacrifice our freedom for security... 
That's what's going to happen. That's how tyrants come in. You give them your liberties for your safety because they put a false flag threat in and you say, where do I go to make sure the Al-Qaeda and ISIS don't come and don't come blow us up all over again? Well, <laughs> shit, I guess I'll give them my rights. I guess I'll, you know, I'll, I'll turn over myself and take my shoes off and take my belt off and you know go through TSA, the, the checkpoints with the, uh, 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 the radiation coming from the screens. When you go through the when you go through the uh, body scanners, oh yeah. See that's that's where that that that, that was a that's a, one of the best examples in the in the last I mean, twenty years that's happened to us. Nine eleven changed everything. Nine eleven just changed everything. Two thousand one was a crazy year. That was the year that that they decided the military industrial complex decided to work in in concert. To bring in the new world order here. It's very real to exist. And is not going away anytime soon. So long as we do nothing about it. It will stay here and run our lives. And we won't have a damn say about it. And now they're using big tech. They've already got the banking system. Pretty much down to a science. They've already got oh, so many people in debt in the U.S. I mean, so many college debt, car debt, all this debt, credit cards, just crazy amount of money. What happens if they really declare emergency, uh, ask for all the debt back? The feds ask for all the debt, they force all the debt from people, and then people can't pay. Then what? You're screwed forever. The people that are debt free maybe a little, maybe a little safer, but God forbid. The people that really owe money to the government. Wow. Wow. I feel sorry for people. I feel so sorry for them. And then people want free college. People just want the government to take care of everything. Free health care. Free this. Free that. Free that. Free. Th I mean, they just don't want to work for anything anymore. Making a society of lum, dumb, lazy people. Dumb, lazy sheep that just herd, herd, collectivization, get, get rid of your private property, give everything to the government. Obama signing the uh, um, Equities Act, what, what's it? I can't even pronounce it, the Equities Act, I can't even, I can't even pronounce it. Where it was a massive land grab, just land grabbing. Giving away the internet to a global government, bro, uh, to a government body. Instead of having us regulate it here at home. You see, it's all about sacrificing what we've done, our creations, our power, to a global entity. And making it their power, their rights. They tell us what to do. They tell us when to eat, what property to own, what we can eat. We can't even collect rainwater and filter that out. You know. And they poison us all day. I just don't understand how that doesn't make people upset. I just don't understand how people aren't interested in this. I just don't understand how people just don't want to try and help their fellow human beings out. You know what I mean? How they don't want to insist in the in the in the in the slowing down of this. Cause it's crazy. It's crazy. Now I'm not gonna make this a very long podcast. It's always been it's already been half an hour. Wow, time flies. It feels like I've only been talking for like five minutes here. But if you like the content that I'm talking about, you can go and find me on the oversight on Facebook. That's the oversight on Facebook. Like my page, subscribe to my channel on the Justin Comer Show on YouTube. Uh, I'm gonna keep saying I'm gonna make a website eventually. I know I don't want to just rely on these social media platforms. It's hard to make a website. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna try and make it as good as I can. Now, that's a work in progress. But for now, I've got this, and I've got you, the viewers and the followers that want to listen to this podcast and really understand what's happening. Um, we might get a video in here one day. Don't really know. That might happen eventually. But for now, we're gonna make an audio podcast. You can just listen to the content. That's what really matters is the content. And. Um, and uh, you can put whatever you want in the comments. Click the bell, subscribe, because I'll, I'll post videos uh, a lot more often now since I've got the equipment to finally do it now and really just spread the message of liberty and uh, pro-American -Ameri ideas uh, that we don't want to force on people, but we want to be the shining light representation around the world of what to be in a modern society in 2019, 2020, moving forward. 
and not be some kind of totalitarian dictatorship that wants to bring in some global entity that no one elected, no one cares about, no one wants to, you know, sacrifice their independence for. So like my pages, follow me on YouTube, and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for listening to The Justin Comer Show. Find me on the other side on Facebook.